Life and Faith, the two are intimately connected. For more than two decades, Life and Faith Television has painted pictures and told stories of faith journeys here in southwestern Ontario. Join us now as we continue the tradition. We explore the diversity in our lives of faith and the faith of our lives. Good morning and welcome. On today's show, the Life and Faith team interviews an Order of Canada recipient from London's Muslim community, a priest from Windsor who divides his time between his pastoral work, his leadership in higher education, and a national chairman position, and also a young woman who has overcome many personal struggles to go on and share her faith and her strength with young folks through working with the summer education team at Riverview United Church in London. One of London's pioneer Muslim community leaders comes in the form of Order of Canada recipient Hanny Hassan. We're privileged to have Hanny with us. So this morning we present the first of a two-part discussion between Hanny and Life and Faith Faisal Joseph. Hanny shares some insight into the history and development through the over 100 years that the Muslim community has been here in London. In the last 50 or 60 years, because you're uh, at that stage in your life now where we can actually call you sort of a pioneer and can tell our viewers a little bit about the, uh, the coming of the Muslim community in London because people would be shocked to hear that we've got a, over a 100 year history in this community and I remember when you were at the Islamic Center and we celebrated the uh, centennial of Muslims being in London and making a difference in this community. Uh, yeah, my, uh, my father came to Canada in 1913 he was preceded by uh, several others uh, who had come from uh, what was then Syria, now Lebanon. Uh, several Christian uh, Arabs came contemporaneously with uh, my father and a couple of his uh, young colleagues. Uh, they were in their teens uh, when they came to London. Uh, the Muslim community was comprised in those days primarily of single young men who uh, had come to uh, uh, find fortune in Canada and to uh, seek a better life. Uh, many of them had planned on returning home. Uh, for the most part they didn't. They, the war came, the First World War came and then uh, the Depression, so they were here for the duration. Uh, my father returned in the 1930s, married my mom, and there were a few other couples that came, but in my uh, uh, useful years. Uh, I was born in 1940. Uh, uh, through the 1940s there were really only two Muslim families in London uh, and uh, it wasn't until immigration opened up in the uh, in the late 40s that permitted family reunification and subsequently in the 1960s. Who were the two families? Uh, one family was our family. The second family was uh, my father's brother's family. Uh, he went by the name of Albert Hassan. Uh, his Arabic name was Ahmed Hassef. My father was a Hassan Uh So we lived fairly close together and then through the 1940s there were a handful of, uh, the late 1940s, a handful of additional families who moved here from other parts of, uh, of Canada. Uh, the Seeds came uh, from Saskatchewan, Western Canada. Uh, the Jaycees came from uh, Nova Scotia, your home province, and uh, the Buttercats came from uh, Northern Ontario. And in the late 1940s, I mean, how many families or, or Muslims would we have had living in the London area? Probably 10 or 15 families and uh, probably uh, 30 or 40 single men. And no mosque at that time? No mosque, uh, no facility. Uh, in fact, it wasn't until uh, uh, 1952 with the formation of the uh, Federation of Islamic Associations of the United States and Canada in the United States uh, that Muslim communities in North America started to organize in earnest and London, Windsor and Edmonton were the Canadian communities that began organizing. If I remember right, my father back in the 50s before he was a married man actually came to London for one of those national North American conferences. Yeah, that was in 1955. Yeah. And um, what I understand is there was quite a unique relationship between the Lebanese Christian and the Lebanese Muslims. I'm, I'm trying to remember, I think it was the Askaf family that was well known here and others 
that they had sort of a club, a Syrian club. Maybe you could tell our viewers a little bit about that relationship and the uniqueness of it as to how they get along. Well, yes, uh, neither the Muslim or Christian Arabs had their own, if you will, church. Yes. Um, unlike the American experience where there were a number of immigrant churches, um, most of the uh, um, Syrian uh, and Lebanese uh, Christians that came here uh, joined uh, the existing Christian churches. And uh, uh, so the social, social outlet was uh, uh, a community-based organization of the Syrian Lebanese Benevolent Society, uh, which met not too far from here on, on Dundas Street. Yes. And, and in addition to that unique relationship, I understood that even mm -hmm. in the 60s with your own college, Dr. Morden would actually take some of his theology classes to, uh, at that time, uh, the first mosque in Canada uh, for lectures and for interfaith dialogue that we're talking over 50 years ago. Uh, yes, my recollection is that it probably started when the, the mosque that, the first mosque in London was, was actually um, that was owned by the community it was uh, a house at the current site of the mosque at 151 Oxford Street West and uh, Reverend Morden had, uh, had actually studied in Alexandria, Egypt so he had some exposure to Islam but he did the, uh, uh, the religious studies, other faith religious studies programs and he took his class to both the synagogue and the mosque uh, because he felt that the students should have a direct exposure with the adherents of, of those faiths so it was actually, I think, probably in the, in the uh, 1950s that uh, uh, Reverend Morden began uh, bringing his class to the mosque. So even at that time, people uh, were well ahead of their time in London, was really a leader in taking that sort of uh, leadership in interfaith dialogue and communication. Yeah, and there were other encounters as well. Um, in my own case, I was the eldest of uh, the males that were born in London. I had a cousin who uh, has since passed who was a few months older than I. And uh, because most of the uh, immigrants were unable to speak English fluently, and even those that could were uncomfortable, uh, frequently as a teenager, I was called upon to uh, uh, represent the community. And uh, uh, our Islamic school would go on road trips around the countryside speaking at churches about Islam. And this would have been in the 50s or 60s? It would have been in the 50s, yeah. Wow, I wasn't aware of that. How did the mosque come about? I mean, that would have been a pretty major endeavor for a small community uh, with, you know, uh, over a dozen families. How did that come about and what was the significance of that, not only in Ontario but in Canada? Well, uh, you know what happened was that the, uh, the old-timers were quite comfortable in maintaining the social relationship based on the ethnicity and their, and their race. Uh, however, the newcomers were mainly young people, um, mostly laborers, uh, and they, uh, they wanted to have a religious identity. And uh, the uh, uh, Syrian Lebanese uh, Benevolent Society morphed into the Canadian Muslim Benevolent Society. And uh, uh, it had said its goal is raising sufficient money to be able to acquire property. I think in probably the last 10 or 15 years, people in the London community, you know, every year for Ramadan they see leaders in the community out at the Salvation Army or the Men's Mission or the Women's Abuse Centre making a positive contribution, raising funds for the poor, the needy, the homeless, so that they can see the difference that Muslims are making not only in the Muslim community but Muslims are making in the non-Muslim community. And that seems to be openly received. Has that been your experience as well? Yes, I think that uh, part of the transformation, of course, has been uh, our community has gone from a, a community of immigrants who had nothing to immigrants who are uh, extremely well endowed. They come with uh, superlative educational credentials and, and uh, professions and uh, you'll find them at the university, you'll find them in all the major hospitals and you'll find them almost in every place uh, of, uh, of, of professional excellence. Uh, speaking of the immigrant community, and we're coming into uh, our fourth generation of Muslims who are native to this country who are, are now finding their place in meaningful ways. And so we have the wherewithal to do more, uh, both for ourselves and for the broader community. Thank you very, very much for your contribution. 